In the next five minutes, you are going to learn why your relational database sucks a time series. Do you remember the 70s? I'm not speaking about these conites or flower power. I'm speaking about something much more exciting. Computing! Back in the 70s, computation was done on mainframes and large servers that most companies couldn't afford. Systems were accessible only to a handful of employees, and all data was entered manually. This is when relational databases were born. And they were awesome! In a relational database, you organize records in tables, and you typically assign primary keys to those records, like the social security number or the barcode for a product on your catalog. The reason why relational databases love primary keys is because they are super serious about updating and deleting data and about maintaining integrity across many tables. Do you know what relational databases are not great at? Keeping track of changes and recording a relational database represents the latest value for a particular object. If I update the price of an article, the database will remember only the latest price and not the history of price changes for this item. But if you think about it, many events you want to capture and analyze don't really have a primary key. And in many cases, you want to keep the history of changes over time, not just the latest version of a record. What's the primary key of the coordinates of a moving vehicle at a particular point in time? What's the primary key of a failed login attempt at your website from a specific IP address? What's the primary key for the exchange rate of euros to USD right now? We are not in the 70s anymore. Today, a single application serves thousands, if not millions, of users. And many of those users are not even human. We have machines talking non-stop to other machines. There are streams of data coming from cars, watches, robots, weather stations, factories and servers all over the world, 24 hours a day. This is what time series are all about. A time series database is specialized in capturing values over time at a very high frequency rate for the use case of doing analytics where the timestamp when an event happened is as important as the event itself. And they facilitate query semantics to make sense of trends and value changes over time. Guess what happens when you keep track of every change on your dataset over time? The dataset grows quite big, and relational databases are not really designed for dealing with very large datasets. Remember, they were built at a different time with a different mindset. And even if you can try to manage a huge dataset with a relational database, you will soon get to the point in which you feel you are fighting the database all the time and probably losing, which is why technologies like Big Data or NoSQL appear a few years ago. The times of a one-size-fits-all database are over. Time series databases, on the other hand, have been designed for a world in which ingesting and querying billions of records on a single table is just business as usual. Time series databases have built-in functionalities for dealing with humongous datasets. Things like downsampling your data or automatic partitioning or dealing with all partitions of your data that you don't want to query frequently anymore. Take as an example QuestDB, the fastest open source time series database. So in users report ingesting hundreds of thousands of events per second from a stock exchange, while enabling their customers to run real-time queries and dashboards on top of the same dataset, with a single instance running QuestDB. Using the industry standard TSBN's benchmark, QuestDB can ingest on a single instance over 1.4 million records per second of CPU metrics with 10 strings and 10 long integers on each record. And the best thing with QuestDB is you query your data using just SQL. And of course, you can do things like joins or filters, aggregations, you know, SQL. Don't get me wrong, I love relational databases. Having been around for over 50 years, 
is a testament to how useful they are for the right use cases. Just don't try to use them for time series.